Tim, in 1982, you were fired from Waterstones and you were given £6,000 compensation for that. Uh, you then took £100,000 worth of venture capital money to launch Waterstones. Nine years later, I understand that you went back and you sold it to WH Smith, the company that fired you, for £47 million. So, how did that feel? Part of the fun of Waterstones, actually, was, um, was taking on WH Smith. Because in those days, I'm here we are 25 years later, but in those days, W. Smith absolutely, totally dominated the British book trade. I don't know what market share they had, maybe 45%. I mean, they totally dominated the, the trade. And the great, one of the greatest bits of fun of the whole thing, both for me and all for the staff, was to, was to take on W. H. Smith. And we used to open as close to them as we possibly could, because, in fact, in one time we did one beside them, one right across the road, because we knew we were better, and we knew we would irritate the hell out of them. But, <laughs> but how did it feel? Well, it felt great. And... Um, in fact, there's a tiny story in that, because when um, Smith um, made their offer, which was a sensational offer at that time, um, I added one million to the price. It was 46, and I added one million to the, for the insult, having been fired. And I must say, hugely to their credit, the Smith chairman laughed and added one million to the price. So <laughs> there was a certain pleasure in the whole thing. But that was actually, a, a, a line within that is a tale about, about um, the whole fun of, Starting companies, really, it's the fun is the competition is taking people on, it's taking the big people on, head on, and uh, and trying to beat them. So, Tim, why was Waterstones so successful? What is it that, that Waterstones were offering that W. H. Smith wasn't at the time? But the whole book trade has moved on enormously over those over the couple of decades since, and we have to go back to the early eighties. I mean, Smith, first thing about the book trade in the in the nineteen eighties is that nobody was allowed to cut the price of books. Um, there were two product groups which were exempt from the 1967, I think it was, Retail Price Act. Uh, one was books, another one was proprietary medicines. So nobody could cut the price of proprietary medicines, which was gave, gave boots, of course, a huge market share at those times. And nobody could cut the price of books. So when we started to go for Smiths, what we, what we went for them on was the fact that they couldn't cut against us. They, so we all, both of us had to compete on level ground as far as price is concerned. And we were able to take them on, and what we knew was a winning ticket, which was wonderful service, wonderful booksellers, hugely greater range of stock, much longer opening hours. Uh, you know, we were one of the earliest people to Sunday trade, even when it was illegal. We uh, Sunday traded were unbridden, and really challenging councils to close down a bookshop on Sunday afternoon, and very few of them wanted to do that. Sure. Um, so just it's service quality. And um, Smiths were wide open to it. Uh, you know, they were very much a huge chain. One of the dangers of Waterstones now, of course, is Waterstones is itself now a huge chain. It's very difficult to keep the standards up. Um, but they were bogged down in a decades old, very self-satisfied, I think, frankly, way of marketing and selling books. And they were sitting ducks for us, really.